All right, y'all, today I'm going to take you through a little bit of a story. And when I say a story, I'm going to talk to you about when I was in Northwest Indiana just about 10 days ago. Some of the things I saw, some of the things I observed, and some tips will come along the way. Of course, you guys know when I get to Indiana, one of the first things I like to do is always drive by the original church project. If you haven't seen that, I'll give you a link up there in the description. It's a step-by-step program I did many years ago. I think it's been 13 years ago now. That's one of the most popular type of playlists that we have here on the channel that teaches you how to take care of your lawn. And I thought, well, I'm going back up there and I'm taking on some project lawns, which is what this video is about, kind of an introduction to those project lawns. I said, I might as well go back and see if the folks at the church will let me take care of it. I contacted them and they said, sure, they'd love to have me come out. So got into town and gave it a good mow. There are a few weeds coming in. Now you're going to see just a couple days from here, I'm going to go out and fertilize it. The weeds like double just in a couple, two, three days there. But for right now, I did a quick mow on it. They've been keeping it in good shape, gave it a nice edge. And some of those weeds that are there, the one that I want to talk about mostly that I was seeing a lot while I was there is henbit. A lot of you guys will think that henbit is actually creeping Charlie ground ivy, but it's not. It's one of the most confused weeds with that. Both have a scalloped edge and both can get purple flowers. The difference is is that creeping Charlie is pretty much there year round. It's a perennial weed and henbit is not. It's a winter annual. So let's talk a little bit about henbit if you're seeing it. I'll put some pictures up on the screen here. The way to stop it now, if you want to spray it, you can. The Roundup for Lawns that we talked about just a couple weeks ago will kill it. Here's some shots from some that we sprayed when I was in town there. So you can see that's like 10 days later. It does kill it. But the thing about Himbit is, let me go through its life cycle. It's actually going to germinate in the fall. So in 2022 in the fall, as soil temperatures are falling to 70 coming out of the summer, that's when the seeds that are in the ground begin to germinate and it grows through the fall and into the winter. And then it just chills under the snow all winter and then in spring it starts to grow again and that's when you start seeing these purple flowers. Now the way you can tell it's difference from ground ivy because or, or creeping charlie because a lot of times they grow together is that himbit has an upright growth habit. It'll grow tall whereas ground ivy creeping charlie stays slow and low to the ground. In fact I can tell you you'll, you'll go online and you'll look for pictures of creeping charlie and it'll actually be himbit a lot of the time. So the best way to tell is that upright growth habit. Now another way to tell that it's himbit is it won't be there in the summer because what's going to happen is as soon as we get here into june and we start getting consistent temperatures in this area of northwest indiana at 85 and above the himbit's going to drop seeds and die because it's an annual so it germinated last fall it lived over the winter in the spring it rushes and it rages and it develops seeds and it drops those and when temps get over 85 to 90 it drops seeds and it dies then the next fall here coming up in 2023 again coming out of summer those seeds will germinate and it starts all over again it's literally the exact opposite growth habit as crabgrass. Crabgrass is a spring annual, right? So with that, what that means is if you have a bad himbit problem and you want to spray it now, go ahead and spray it with the Roundup for lawns or just wait because it's going to die on its own and save the chemical. But then we get into the fall, you put down your pre-emergent. Prodiamine will help to stop himbit. So that was something that I saw real quick there that I thought I would point out to you guys as well as a lot of times people will confuse it with the violet. So here's some pictures of violet. I was actually seeing these white lavender violets, which I haven't seen in lawns before, or at least I never noticed. Usually they're the darker purple ones. So that right there is the first part of the trip to Northwest Indiana. Next, I went over to my son's house. Now, some of you will probably remember Nick used to work here in the warehouse and uh, he was going to school here. Well, he's now gone back up to Munster, Indiana over by there. And so we were at his house and decided to go ahead and work on that. So that was fun. We gave it a little mow. We gave it a little blow, a little trim, a little edge. And we also put down some fertilizer and pre-emergent. You guys up there in Northwest Indiana, I mean, it's a weird spring. I mean, I'm making this on May 1st. We're almost to Cinco de Mayo. We're almost to the Kentucky Derby, which is when I've always said the main dandelion bloom is. But when I was there in uh, just 10 days ago, there was a lot of dandelion bloom everywhere. I think the recent cold temperatures that you guys have gotten have kind of held things up and you might be on the on the lookout for another massive dandelion bloom but one thing that you're still in the window for with soil temperatures you're still well under 75 80 degree soil temps right now so you can put down prodiamine to stop crabgrass even if this is the first time you're seeing my content and you haven't put anything down you think you're late well you may have missed your first application a few weeks ago but right now you can still prevent another half. In other words, preventing 50% of the crabgrass is better than preventing none of it. And so go ahead and get a prodiamine app down now to stop that crabgrass, which can rage in and get you get you in trouble. We, we were making this a project lawn and I did go ahead and put a nice edge of prodiamine down against the neighbor's lawn, which I've been watching for years. And I know that that lawn is riddled with crabgrass. So we'll get some more video coming up and we'll show the effectiveness of prodiamine 
as we move into the summer. And then, of course, another thing you guys know I'm going to do when I go back home is I'm going to visit my buddy, Jake the Lawn Kid. Although, although he's not a kid anymore, this guy has an actual real truck, real trailer, right on spreader, sprayer. He's out there doing acre properties in the country. Uh, just really proud of him. But what I, I wanted to go ahead and embarrass him real quick since we're talking about this. So you guys probably remember he's got Pro Vista at his lawn. This is what it looks like right now or 10 days ago coming out of spring. Kind of interesting looking. Definitely not growing much. It's a slower grower. If you don't know what Scott's Pro Vista is, I have the St. Augustine grass. This is the Kentucky bluegrass version that we sodded for him a couple years ago. But the way I want to embarrass him is last year I went there in the later spring. And one of the things that we didn't realize with the Scotts Pro Vista is that the seed heads, because it's a slower grower and it's a lower grower, not a shower, that means you gotta mow it low. Otherwise you mow over top of the seed heads because you cut, you're used to cutting Kentucky bluegrass at like three and a half inches. The seed heads never get higher than three and a half inches. So you end up with a lawn that's 100% seed heads, which is what we found here last year when we went to see Jake and I was making, telling him he killed the lawn. Well, here, we'll just go and let me show you how I was ribbing him a little bit. Jakester, what's up, buddy? No, what is Nipsco doing? I don't care. I mean, oh, the lawn is what it is. Oh, it's in seed. Yeah, dude, it's in full seed right now, huh? Mm -hmm. That's wild. It's I just like so much seed. Oh, but it's just it, what's weird is how much seed heads in here. My name is Jake the Lawn Kid. <laughs> this is my brown lawn. Welcome to my brown lawn. <laughs> On tonight's episode of Brown, Al, do you remember how long we 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 slaved over this yard? And you know what? I think. I think he, I think you killed it faster than it took us to sod it. Well, it's neglectful. Look at all this. This is all Poa Anya. Put trivia on it! That was so loud. <laughs> That's what I yelled. Yeah. Bro, you did a great, I mean, look. It looks, it looks um, his dead. Hero, his hero just ripped on his lawn. But you know what the whole thing is? The edge is tight. I gotta say, toy. the edging is tight. Toy, like a toy guy. I mean, I don't know how you got it to look that brown. How come the area where we old grass was is still green? We want to know how Jake turned the lawn brown so fast. So there you can see, I'm just showing, because some of you might have the Pro Vista Kentucky Bluegrass, maybe like five of you. So what you want to do is you want to actually try to scalp it if you can. And you can see Jake this year, he's got his really low, so he's not going to have that seed head problem, I hope. But I will be going back there because these are all project lawns that you've seen previously. So we will be going back and taking a look and seeing if he has that seed head problem again but again the way to get out of that is to scalp that lawn and provista likes nitrogen so just hammer it so this stuff is weird and it, it's cool though it needs a little push yeah it looks cool i like the look of it because it's like stubby the last thing i met up with my buddy luke you guys know luke he's called the turf king he's been in a couple of my videos he helped me last year when we did the philanthropy video and we're gonna actually be doing some more there. We're gonna get a follow-up with Mariana and also with the St. Jude House. We're gonna go be going back there pretty soon and just seeing how they're doing. Uh, that'll be coming up here in a couple weeks. But me and Luke, we went and did some fertilizer at his dad's house. So you're gonna see some uh, work there at a home over by Lansing, Illinois over by there. Sprayed some weeds, that kind of stuff. Went and did fertilizer at the church, Wait, waited till the week put down some some flagship there as well as pre-emergent sprayed some weeds so give you a follow-up there coming up in a couple weeks and then his neighbor across the street Jeannie super cool she's a teacher in the area she is getting into lawn care and being a lawn care nut so we went over and put down some fertilizer for her I will show you real quick this is what her lawn is already looking like just 10 days later dominating like crazy so we'll be going back because I you know they got a lot of thin spots there a lot of crazy things going on so we'll be going back there in a couple weeks to do a follow-up but this is just an introduction to kind of all of those project lawns. The last thing I want to say to you to make sure that you subscribe here is there's been a huge controversy that if you apply sand to a concrete feeling clay lawn, which if you go to Northwest Indiana, the, the lawns there are clay and they already feel like concrete. But people tell me if you put sand on top of that clay that you'll create concrete out of something that's already hard like concrete. So whatever that means, we went ahead and tested that in Luke's lawn, his beautiful lawn, and I put out some very dangerous sand and I'll be going back there in just a couple weeks to show you what did or didn't happen. And if I'm honest, he was actually pretty nervous about it himself. So there you go. Hope you guys have enjoyed this little video. Hope you've learned a little something, get you inspired. Leave me your comments and questions below. As always, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the lawn.